Okay, uh, so this is using Fourier series. So I had to pick a, uh, an equation where we, had, we were given a function and not just a couple of initial values. So I made the equation a partial differential equation, the most famous one, Laplace's equation. So uh, this is the setup, and you'll see how Fourier series comes in. The, we're in a circle. I'm going to make this a nice model problem. So inside this circle, we're solving Laplace's equation. Laplace's equation was the second derivative of u in the x direction plus the second derivative of u in the y direction is zero. That's the, that's the way heat temperature distributes itself when you leave it alone. If you're, if, if, in this problem, I'm going to put a source of heat at that point. So it'll be a point source, a delta function. And on the rest of the boundary, temperature zero. So, so the boundary function is a delta function with a spike at that one point and zero elsewhere. And our problem is to solve the equ Laplace's equation inside the circle, and we use polar coordinates because we've got a circle. So there's the equation with x and y, but we really are thinking r and theta. And the reason is you get beautiful solutions to this equation using r and theta, and that was a family of solutions, r to the nth cos n theta just works. And so does r to the nth sin n theta. And that's for every n. So we have, we can combine, we have a linear equation. We can take combinations of solutions with coefficients a n in the cosines and b n in the sines. And now, here's the key step, put in r equal one, Put r equal 1, and then this solution, u at 1 and theta, is r equal 1 is the boundary. It's the circle. And that's where we're given u of 1 to be the delta function. The point source, the delta function, delta of theta. The point source at theta equals 0. So you see our job. That function, that boundary condition, is supposed to tell us the A's and the B's, and then we have our solution. So by, by putting R equal to 1 in this formula, we're supposed to get the delta function. So let me put R equal 1, easy to do. It's the sum of a n 1 to the nth cos n theta plus the sum of b n 1 to the nth sine n theta is supposed to match the delta function. So that's the Fourier series for the delta function. That's the whole point, that we, we use a Fourier series ex, d, expression for the boundary function, whatever that boundary function is, here it's a particularly nice, neat, neat one. And actually, the delta function is an even function. It's zero for the, at theta, and it's zero at minus theta. So changing theta to minus theta still leaves me the spike at zero. So there, because it's an even function, I won't see any sign. I won't see any odd functions, the sine theta. And I, ha I have an easy time to find the coefficients a n of the cosines. Actually, that, we did that directly from the formula for the a n's. Uh, let, me, let me just remember that formula. The formula was a 0 was 1 over 2 pi times the average. <laughs> A, A0 is the average value of the, of the temperature. And the temperature on the boundary is delta theta. And that integrates to 1, and we get the answer 1 over 2 pi. That's the average temperature. Isn't that a little weird? 
the temperature is zero except at one point. At that point, it's a delta function with, with uh, coefficient one outside it, and then we get one over two pi as the average. The other ANs, the coefficients of the cosines, uh, are one over pi times the integral of our delta function times cos m theta d theta. And the delta function, that point source, picks out that number at theta equals 0. And that number is 1. So I'm getting 1 over pi. So finally, I now know the a's and b's. When I put those in, that tells me the solution. The solution, now I can put R back in the picture. It's a sum. Well, let me take the A0 term. The A0 is 1 over 2 pi. That's the constant. That's the average. Plus a sum of 1 over pi's cos n theta from n equals 1 to infinity. And r to the nth, sorry, r to the nth. So you see what happens. When r is 1, we have the delta, Fourier series for the delta function. That's the very un exceptional function that's on the given on the boundary. As soon as r is less than 1, these r to the nth get small, and we have a series that adds up to a reasonable sum, and we can actually, uh, it's possible to add up that series. It's possible to add up that series. It's a geometric series if you go, for, if you switch from cosines to exponentials. That's usually the good way to get good formulas. And here, so you can add it up, and I think it, there's a 1 over 2 pi still there. And I think it's 1 minus r squared over 1 plus r squared minus 2r cos theta. That, let me just be sure I got that right. Yep, it looks good. Looks good. And, and we could check if it's good. As r, uh, let's take theta equals 0. So if we take theta equals 0, let me draw that circle again. Theta equals 0, we're coming out on that ray. And we're expecting to see infinity when we get there, at r equal 1. So at theta equals 0, so let me just put uh, on the ray theta equals 0, this is sort of what you should do. Just to, we have a formula for all r and theta, but let's look at a, some particular points to see what's happening. So along that ray where theta is 0, uh, I have 1 over 2 pi, 1 minus r squared, over 1 plus r squared minus 2r, because cos theta is 1. And 1 plus r squared minus 2r is 1 minus r squared, right? Because cos theta is 1 on this ray. Theta is 0, cos theta is 1. And now 1 minus r will factor out of this. And I think we get 1 plus r. And we still have a 1 minus r down below. I like that. You don't often, for partial differential equations, get some nice expression for the solution. So that's the solution. And as r goes to 1, this solution blows up. Right. The temperature is infinite on the boundary. But the temperature is something reasonable inside. And at r equals 0, I have 1 over 2 pi. Well, of course, it's the average value. Right at the center. The temperature is going to be the average on the boundary. That's a natural key property of Laplace's equation. It averages everything, actually. If I take a little circle in the anywhere, the temperature in the center of that circle would be the average 
of the temperatures around the little circle. For all the circles, it's just a, the Laplace uh, equation, solving the Laplace equation averages everything. And uh, the, uh, the result is that the temperature function sort of smooths out as I come in. On the, around the boundary, it's far from smooth. There's a big jolt at theta equals zero. But if I look, at, look on that circle, or that circle, or this circle, the temperature is a nice smooth function. So it, 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 and it's never going to be uh, above the maximum on the boundary. And it's never going to be below the minimum on the boundary. Everything's being averaged. I, I might, uh, so that's, you see, a use of the Fourier series. Uh, for one particular function. I, I could do another function, but I don't think I will. Uh, I could take the function that's one on the top of the circle and minus one on the bottom half of the circle. Okay, that's a function with a jump, but not a delta function. So we would see its Fourier series. That would give us the A's and the B's. There'd probably only be B's in that case, sign, sign terms, and We'd, uh, uh, we'd get an answer. May I just, while I'm talking about averages, add one final comment. Usually, for a complicated region, we can't solve Laplace's equation with formulas. It's not possible. We, we, we can't find sines and cosines that match some crazy boundary. So we have to replace Laplace's equation. So I'll write Laplace's equation again. That goes into U, uh, we, we, we have a region, and we carve it out with a grid. And then at each point on the grid, we have an equation connecting the value u at that point, say u zero at the center, with u, u uh, east maybe, u west, u north, and u south. So we have an equation, and I want to write that equation down. u center is, uh, it's just going to be the average. It's just going to be one quarter of u east, u west, u north, and u south. So that'll be true. At, that equation will hold. The unknowns are all these u's, the u's at all the mesh points, and I have an equation at every mesh point. So I have the same number of equations uh, uh, from the mesh points as unknowns at the mesh points. I solve that big system, and that gives me a solution U, an approximate solution U to Laplace's equation. So this would be called Laplace's difference equation, or Laplace's five-point scheme because it uses five points in that average. Okay, that's, that's an important problem in numerical analysis. Thank you.